All right, it is time for another baby onesie frame for my craft fair coming up. And I have my template um, chipboard. And I've decided we're going to start out with the little girl. I have this pretty blue um, flowered fabric that I want to do for the bottom part of the dress and we're going to pleat it and kind of make it a little fluffy. I pulled out some ribbon that I got um, on sale at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure if we're going to put that underneath it yet or not but we'll figure that out as we go. Then I have this little swatch of white fabric and it probably yeah there we go it this one has some little dots oh i got this from walmart's and then we have a couple of them Let's see if i can pick it up it has some flowers but each one of them has a little design so i'm going to use one of these kind of debating well, i can't really see it on one of these um, for the top and then on the back you can also pick up at Walmart's um, this is 12 by 12 signature in wild indigo now this is 50 double sided paper but they're pretty thin um, I think I'm gonna go with this one um, it says all throughout, it just says live in love, live in love, live in love, and the little, little swirls there. And like I said, it's thin, but it'll do well for the purpose of just covering up the back. At least that's what I'm thinking at the moment, but I may, that one's really pretty. Um, I may change my mind. We'll just see how it goes. All right, but we do need to start out. Oh, and I'm definitely using from my swap that I did with uh, Tony. She's Little Black Dress is our YouTube. This was my um, Happy Mail in my swap. And she sent these beautiful roses. And I think I'm going to use these two the white and the kind of purplish blue color here i think we're going to put those on the front so um if you haven't seen the video of all of these little goodies that i received in the september renee bouquet um swap i'll put a try and remember to put a link in the bottom but let's set this aside and we will start with our batting my roll here. Now I noticed on my previous um, onesies, as I started to sew onto the front of it, it started to smush it down a bit. Of course, this one is only going to have a stitch across here, but I, I had doubled up on my batting, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. We're going to make a nice and fluffy. So let's see. I'm just going to do a rough cut right now and then we will make a closer cut when we get the, when I get this big roll out of the way. hot glue getting warm in case we need it. I 
All right, I have just a little stick glue, just regular kids stick glue. We're going to use that to put our batting on. I don't know. Yeah, I think part ain't gonna work. I'm just gonna do some regular tacky glue. This is Elaine's tacky glue and just kind of try and tab it to get our second. Hopefully it'll stick. start. Okay, we need to cover them up with our white fabric. <laughs> I'm still having trouble this time which one I want to use. This looks more like tulips. I don't think I want tulips. And then this one looks like little daisies. Hmm. This one kind of looks like holly. I think we're going to use the daisies. Wow, that's not very big at all, is it? Okay, I'm going to roughly cut it out. I want to cover the whole onesie and then the dress will be the bottom half. But just in case she gets flipped over, we want her bottom half covered also. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Give her a little bit more room since we're using double. Double uh, batting. Make sure I have plenty of room. I always have a tendency to end up with it too short. I'm just going to cut on this fold line. And that ain't the right scissors. Alright. I am going to finish cutting this out. Then I'm going to bring it to my iron and make sure it's nice and um, pressed and get all of these fold lines out and then I will be back. Okay, I got mine straight, uh, fat, bleh. <laughs> I got mine ironed down as well as I can. Um, be aware if you do have a pattern that your patterning, pattern, pattern, is face up. Which I think that's yeah, face up. And then we're gonna flip them over. All right, get your handy dandy fabric tack. And I am going to start at the bottom. Um, no, I've done this once before on a video, but I do want to get, in case anyone has not seen that, I may fast forward. Uh, let's see. Okay. Move everything out of the way. Okay, now this is going to be hard to see on white, huh? Now we should be good. Okay, I'm going to take and I'm going to cut my fabric straight to this part here, but without cutting it, um, without going underneath it. 
I'm going to have to squish them down every once in a while to make sure you're on the right path. And let me get bone folder helps, but you will be cl cleaning glue off of it afterwards. I just let mine, <clears throat> excuse me, soak in a, um, a glass of hot water. Okay, and we're just going to fold that up. Excuse my bone folder. I know it's nasty. I need to clean it. Okay, well that grabs hold a little bit. We are going to come and I'm going to cut some of this off. I guess I shouldn't be wasting fabric, but... I go up and do one side and then by the time I get to the other side I've pulled the fabric over too much so I'd just rather have more than less. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cut somewhat of a little curve around the leg portion. Okay, so now I'm going to take and cut it across like this, but to, to don't go all the way and end up cutting the whole thing off. Let me show you. Just go up to there, and with it still attached, we're going to pull it over like such. So let me get some glue. I should have bought some more. I'm going to have to fight getting this find something I could put it in to keep it upside down. That ain't gonna work. Where's the cup? Alright. So we're just gonna pull that corner up. Try and make it nice and pretty. And while I hold this, I'm just going to go through and make small cuts all the way up to the chipboard, not going underneath. Just going around. Can you guys see that? Let me pull it down a little bit more. So now we can take our glue. Start folding those over. <clears throat> this is fabric doesn't seem to be quite as thin as the last one that I used. It's kind of a big piece. I'm going to just put a little hot glue and hold it till uh, the fabric tack dries. Okay. And again, I'm going to go a little bit smaller on this part. go through but don't cut the whole piece off because it's going to be like our other corner. We're going to come up like this. On this side, I'm going to come up 
about halfway just to get us going. Make your corner as pretty as you can. All right, now we're going up to this lovely part that I just. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to cut up. I'm going to cut up and then come in to just underneath that corner right there. Let's see how this works. I'm batting out of the way. So I'm going to come in at an angle just underneath it. And then I'm going to come in and cut just to the other side of it. Let me get this guy right here all the way. Maybe you see it better. Stuff my batting in there. fold. I'm not going to worry about it because that's where our the bottom of our dress is going to be. All right. Now I'm going to cut into there. My batting out of the way. And I'm going to use my hot glue for this. I'm going to take that little tab and pull it up and keep our fingers crossed. Hold that down. I'm going to come at it. And then pull that piece over. And just work with it the best you can. All right, I think I finally got mine. under a black I think you're having trouble seeing my white on white. I ended up pulling this a little bit further than I wanted to so I'm just gonna cut again down to right in the corner of the arm. And then I'm gonna get rid of some of this extra fabric. I 
and then just like all our other corners, come at it this way. <coughs> Come at it like this. Thinking. Just underneath it. I just realized I wasn't exactly on camera, so I'm not sure if y'all saw this cut right here. Alright, I'm going to turn around sideways. And I'm going to come at it. Actually, let me trim this a little bit. Just going about until I got about half an inch all the way across, half an inch to an inch. All right. Get rid of some of this excess. Sorry. Okay, now I'm going to flip them completely upside down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this corner that we've done with all the rest of the corners. I'm going to come at it just below. And then again this way. And I'm going to go ahead and get this Top part glued down. And get the corner glued down. I tried to keep my glue upside down, but it kept running out. Let's see. Hold that for a second, and then we're going to go through and do like we did on our bottom curve. We're just going to take and cut all the way up to the chipboard. I can tell already, though, these are going to be too long. I'm just going to make them a little bit shorter, including this. Lopping them over. 
Pull it snug from the top. And we're going to cut this one like all the rest of them. Same thing this one, I'm going to come in about right there. Turn it again. I'm just gonna cut out some of the excess. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and cut this corner. Got everything sticking in my fingers. Get a little excess off. Okay, I'll go ahead and cut excess off of this whole side. Alright. Alright, we got another inseam underarm do. Try it just like last time. Try and go in and make a little V. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, gee, my glue is squirting out everywhere. Wow. <clears throat> I 
There's a lot of glue. Let's see if we can grab a hold of all this and get it up in the right position. Let me try to get some of this glue off first. All right, I cut mine over. Uh, you cannot see it from the front, but yeah, it's a big fat mess. Um, whenever we put our, sorry, <laughs> I kind of forgot what I was saying. Whenever we put our, put our paper on the backing, this little edge, see how close I've got it? It's going to show. So what I like to do is to take some of our little scraps that we have. And I'm going to fill that in there with my glue that's squirting all over the place. Except for when I want it to. So we're going to put that down and kind of mold it around the edge. You still will not be able to see it from the front. Make sure of that. Dogs are barking at something. So I've got that glue on there. I'm just gonna kind of mold it. And then that away, whenever we do put our paper, it'll show the white and not that black part. We really don't want people to see. Okay. Now we're going to go around this side here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this fabric down around the curve. Let me cut this behind there so you can see. And my dog very mad. And my husband's up in the front of the house, so I'll just let him worry about it. Okay. So I'm going to take my little scissors, push the batting in, give it a little cut right there, and we're going to glue this whole side down. Give it a good little tug. Make sure it's tight um, for the front. Okay.
seriously. Okay. Now on this side I may have to put another little white piece because um, that's really close to the edge and I don't think when we put on our paper backing it'll um, cover that but we'll check it later and see. Now we have the front of our onesie on. I have a couple little wrinkles here. But when we go and we do our stitching around the edge, we can always hold those down and pull them out. And that will be the next step. Alright, so we're going to try and get this stitching done. Um, it's a little awkward. My camera is in, front of, in between me and the sewing machine. But I'm just going to stitch about a quarter of an inch all the way around and I'm going to start here in the arm and I'm going to go ahead and put the needle down I like to start with it down excuse me I forgot to put my pedal I get my pedal ready all right and I've got as much light on here as I possibly can so I'm hoping y'all could see. Alright. I'm going to just kind of go really slow. Now on these bins, the um, fabric where it's all doubled up. Ooh, that one's... It's going to be a little bit hard and I have to put my hand on the wheel of the sewing machine to get it going. Let's see. Yep. Use the wheel and maneuver it around the best I can. I think we need to go one more. And let's see what we can get here. Alright, I think this might work. I'm going to be able to get my chipboard piece underneath there so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here and then I'm going to go back to where we started and we're going to well we can't go the opposite direction Let me go straight across like this. And we'll pick up back there. I'm just using the hand wheel. Because I had a lot of fabric bunched up on this corner. It gets a little tough. Trying to get out that wrinkle, but I don't think it's going to work for me. But she'll still be cute, even with a wrinkle. After all, this is handmade. I can't see where I'm meeting up at. and see where I was going.
scissors are. <clears throat> Give yourself a good little amount of tails on it because we are going to have to tie that up. Alright, yeah, I got my fabric bunched up a little bit, but it's just how it's going to be. So I'm going to put start on my last stitch, try and get that needle as close to it as possible where we left off. to the next step all right now the fun part grab you a safety pin and we are gonna flip it over in each place that we started and stopped okay when you make a stitch one piece of uh, thread goes over the other thread and it makes a loop and what we're going to try and do is to get one thread, give a little tug, and find that loop and pull that, and that will pull these front strands to the back. So just give them a little tug. You'll be able to see that loop. It's not, see, Apple. Got a hold of mine, and it pulls it from the back. Don't give it too much of a tug because you don't want to undo your stitch. And there's my second one. So I've got both of those. Let's cut off excess a little bit. So I'm going to take it and tie all that into a knot. And I'm going to cut some of that excess. I want to leave some of it there. And just to keep it out of its our way, I'm going to take some hot glue and just run it across these to keep them down. I don't want to put any wet glue right now because I want to move it around and, and, you, and mess with it without it sticking to anything. So don't burn your fingers. I've got my bone folder here. And I'm just going to pull those all in, towards the inside. Run a... And then just smush all the strings into that glue. And for me, maybe I'll have to do it twice because I missed them. Sorry, I feel like my radio is too loud. It's bugging me anyway. I like soft background music. All right, that one's stuck down and we've got a few more to go. just having all kinds of trouble with so what I am going to do is get my scissors and cut it please don't try this unless it's just like absolutely necessary and I'm just going to take a little bit of glue because I don't want to end up with a big glue spat uh, splatter all over my fabric 
So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the tip of my pen and glue that thread down in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Glue it down in place. All right. So we have the front finished. So now it's time for our skirt. So grab your skirt fa uh, fabric. I do want to pleat it. I know I want to cut a piece that is five and a half inches tall, but I'm going to pleat it. So I'm going to do eight. So we're going to cut five and a half by eight. I'm going to put my fabric. Alright, so we are going to measure our fabric. I have a fabric pen, but you can use chalk, you know, um, any, a pencil. In fact, I don't even know if my fabric pen is going to show up on this. Nope. Let's try a pencil. Okay, I want to go eight inches. And I want it to be five and a half. Oop, my fabric's falling off. So I'm just going to seems small. I think I'm going to go ahead and do nine inches. I'm going to add another inch down here just to be safe. I'd rather have too much fabric than not enough. Alright, the first thing that we need to do, actually I'm going to use that end and just do a side. We need to do a hem. So I'm just barely going to fold over my fabric. I'd say maybe a half of an inch, uh, I'm sorry, a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to tack it with some glue a little bit. couple of places just to hold it. We don't want a lot of glue um, gunking up our sewing machine. Of course I could use pins but you do you. I'm gonna do this one this way. So it probably would have been a lot easier to use pins. And then go ahead and um, do a hem. Just a bottom stitch. But first, um, iron your fabric if you have any uh, fold lines or anything in it. You actually could iron this over like this and make it easier. And then I'm also going to. 
trying to think of a one I've pulled. Yeah, let's also do both sides. No, no, don't do that. Just in case for some reason we have to attach more fabric on the end if it's not long enough. At least wait until I do it before you cut yours. So I'm just going to stitch this bottom real quick. Alright, I have my little hem stitched. So I'm going to take my needle again. And pull through that fabric to the from the front to the back, getting in that little loop, and then just tie those together. Now the next thing we're going to do is um, pleat the top of it. So I'm going to set up my um, camera at my sewing machine, and then we'll go through that together. All right, I'm sorry. I started. I thought I was recording. <laughs> oh, we're halfway there. Okay. Um, fork to learn to do your pleat. That's how I learned. Now, I've already started, but in the what I did was, for the beginning, um, what you want to do is put your fabric inside the middle tine. Okay and then take and then lay it down flat and then just twist it over and as you're twisting it over you're going to have this fold on the bottom Let's see if y'all can see that okay you're going to have this fold on the bottom you want the top fabric piece while you're holding down the fo fold you just want to line that up Okay. And then I'm going to, now I've got the fold, so I'm going to stitch just until I just barely pass that fold we just made. Alright, now again, and I, oh, my fabric is just, kind of went out of line, but I was trying to keep it a quarter of an inch from the top. So, here we go again, we got our fabric in our middle tine, lay it down flat. Flip it over, pull it out, and make sure that the top of the fabric and the bottom of the fold meet together. Wow, I really hope y'all can see this. And then that, see, we have our fold here. So we're just going to stitch, try and get mine back to a quarter of an inch. All right. Now I have barely have a, <laughs> a little bit of fabric left, but now you can do all this and go ahead and um, put pins in it, and or you can just fold it by hand as you go, which is whatever makes it easier. This is just the way that I first learned how to do it. All right, so I'm going to flip it around. I'm on the end, so I'm just going to fold the whole thing under oh I did something wrong there I know what I did wrong I went the wrong way with ah, my fabrics just too short so I'm gonna do a fold by hand and we're just gonna pinch it like this and then lay it down which that's the other way that you can do it just don't get your fingers back up all right <clears throat> so now we have our pleat so you know what that is not nearly enough fabric like I said I hope you waited till I did mine let me see how much more fabric that we need okay so I went ahead and cut another eight inches by five and a half and then I put my hem on the bottom so I'm going to take the piece that we just did and we're going to put pattern side to patterns together like so 
and then I'm just going to put a couple of pins just try to make it a little bit easier when I edit this I will definitely try and I will definitely make a note you needed 16 by five and a half hopefully I don't think we'll have it too short this time we may be too long but okay so I'm just gonna I've got them all pinned together you know, if you have a pattern, your pattern needs to be on the inside, and I'm just going to run a stitch about a quarter of an inch. Reverse it. Open it up we have just this little seam so I'm gonna go ahead and um, iron that flat and I'll be back and we'll finish pleating it all right so I have my other eight inches added and I have a seam stitched it together and ironed it out but now I need to keep going with my pleat and now since I'm going to have to go ahead and try and do it right handed so I guess maybe y'all get to see it both ways because I've already started on this side let me see if I can reach around my camera All right. hold on just a sec Okay. So I'm going to do my next pleat. I'm going to put the fabric in the middle tine. And I'm sorry if this all looks so clumsy. Because I am not. That is not going to work for me. I'm just going to have to go the other direction. I can't help it. My hand just won't do that okay so I've got the end of my fabric I'm gonna go about a half an inch down and put this fork in the middle tine and then flip it I'm going to make sure that this top fabric piece here is same level with the little fold in the back and then keep holding it down and here we go again I'm just going to hope that my pleat lines up are just not cooperating very well for me today. I'm not really sure what the problem is. Alright, let's try this again. I think it got bunched up on the bottom. Man, when it rains, it pours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull out this fabric real quick. At least it does show y'all people who have actually been doing this for a very long time. Stuff still happens. Okay, let's try that again. Oop, 
I'm going the wrong way. Maybe I just do my first one by hand. All right. Come on, come on. Oh, that may be the problem. My fabric went, my thread went underneath it. Whoops. my hands aren't in your guys way it's hard to watch and maybe that's a little bit better exactly where I need. I'm going to fold this last one by hand. I want to get that pleat just right on this last little part so it matches up. So we have our little dress and go ahead and pause your video. I um, stitched a little hem on both sides. So go ahead and get that done real quick before you move any forward. Now my top doesn't reach side to side, but I'm going to spread it out to where this part here does reach side to side because all of this is going to be covered up which we are going to move to next let's see how that looks huh. may need to even add more to it Jiminy Crickets because once we fold it around this way Alright, so I'm not liking how flat our little dress is laying, even with our pleats. So, I have this that I got from Hobby Lobby. Um, it has uh, three layers, kind of tiered. And I want to put that underneath, um, starting pretty low, so you can definitely see it peeking out underneath and then layer it even higher so i was trying to decide whether to do glue or to stitch it on i'm just going to start by cutting where i want it to be here for my first layer I think I'm going to go ahead and stitch that on. So I'm just going to put a couple of pins. I do want to make it curve. So I'm going to put one here. Put one about there. And that way we have it close to the bottom. And when we put our dress on, 
it'll peek out underneath and then we'll add more layers so I'm just going to run a stitch across right here all right, so I got that one stitched down, so I'm going to go ahead and tie down the ends of my threads. And I'm going to pin down another layer. Now, if you don't have this type of um, ribbon like I have, you can take any ribbon and do the same pleat that we did on here and just start stacking them on top of each other and that will work also all right for our next little layer i am going to pin this one down I'm going to stitch that one down. Okay, so I have that layer done, and since I realize this is going to be under the dress and nobody's going to see it, I am just going to tie the end thread without pulling it through from the front. All right. Trying to decide if we want to add any more under there. Alright, so the final answer on the fabric is I, I added another 8 inches. So I'll put it on the screen and um, so you'll know that your original piece needs to be 24 inches long and 5.5 and inches tall. And I did my hem, have it all the way around, I have it pleated, and then that away, if we move our dress a little bit higher for our pretty lace to show just a peek out of the bottom, and then we can gather it here a little bit, and um, go with it that away so I believe that is going to be our next step I'm gonna go ahead and glue it just to where this whole end comes over here so maybe up by a quarter of an inch down like this and we'll do it on both sides going to start here. Man, my glue is making a mess. Just trying to find a scrap sheet of paper. back around and make sure I have it on the correct spot and I just put my whole hand in that glue and then I just laid it down shape it crickets woman all right get an idea again of where I want it to fall go a little bit higher there we are 
Do I have my height in the right place? Where's my scrap? There, cover up that glue. So I'm just going to press that in place. And of course I want to make it even across, so I'm just going to get a ballpark idea to make it even. And we're going to add glue. of our fabric. It's going to be loose in the front, but we will fix that out later. Alright, I'm going to set this side to dry. 